It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you are hanging out with me today on a Friday. Y'all, we made it to the end of another week. Cannot believe that it is already here, but I am thankful that you are hanging out with us today for another one of our extended Friday listens. And uh, today we are going back to the music of Pink Floyd for the first time in a very long time with their song, Adam Heart Mother. This song has been requested uh, to us for quite a while, and I am pleased that today is its turn here on the channel. As I was reading in, I see that this is their title track from their fifth album that was released in 1970. It was recorded at Abbey Roads, and it was their first album to reach number one on the UK charts. Um, as I read in on this one, I, I see a couple of things that, that pique my interest. First of all, this is a long tune. It's 23 minutes and 44 seconds. And if you are a regular viewer of the channel, you will know that I tend to like to have the lyrics pulled up. I will type in, you know, what the lyrics are and have them listed so that I can follow along with the lyrics as the song is being played. So today, as per usual, I go to the Google machine and I type in Adam Hart, Mother, Pink Floyd, lyrics, return, and uh, wait for the lyrics to be pulled up. And there are no lyrics. It's really intriguing, y'all. We've got a classic band with a piece that's almost 24 min minutes, and there are no lyrics to this. And that really piques my interest. Um, the other thing that I am realizing is that I really am not familiar with early Pink Floyd. As I was reading in and looking at their discography, I'm realizing that I think the earliest music that I have heard from them is off of their Dark Side of the Moon album, which was recorded and released in 1973. So not only will this be a first time listen uh, for me to this song, but also to music from this album, and I think pretty much anything pre-Dark Side of the Moon. So I have no idea what we're in store for, uh, but I'm, I'm uh, eager to get to it. I have our Friday cocktail with me, y'all. Today I have pulled our Port Charlotte heavily peated scotch, and I am uh, excited to give this in a little pour and to uh, have this uh, cocktail companion as we go through our, our listen today. This is one of my favorites. I love these peated scotches. They are quite lovely. So cheers, everybody. Happy Friday. Mm, mm. Really, really good stuff. Ooh. Very, very, very good. So, uh, who is performing for us today? We've got Roger Waters on bass, David Gilmore on guitar, Richard Wright on keyboards, Nick Mason on the drums, and the piece was written by the band along with uh, orchestrator and uh, co-composer Ron Giesen. He did the orchestral arrangements for this, and there is also a choir that appears in this. Although without lyrics, I'm kind of figure, I'm curious to see what the choir is going to do. So uh, let us let us dive in, y'all, uh, because this is a long tune. Uh, let's uh, let's see what they've got. This is Adam Hart Mother, the original studio recording by Pink Floyd. Here we go. I think the album art is also quite intriguing as well. It's just a picture of a cow. There's no language that doesn't say the name of the band or the name of the album or anything. It's just a picture of a cow in a field. <laughs> really interesting. Okay, what is going on? Bass. Low brass. Is this the right recording? Trumpets, horns, trombones, low brass. It's a full, like, brass choir. quite a surprise. Oh, 
Okay. It's quite the opening. A lot of conical brass in that. You hear the big attacks. French horns. There might even be euphoniums in that, flugel horns in that. I'm hearing a nice big round sound. Horse neigh in the background. What? The Trump is just going. A motorcycle? Who let a motorcycle into the uh, studio? Reminds me a bit of some of the Beatles' late albums with that orchestra that, that joins in the, with the band. Organ, bass, and I think that's a cello. That's a cool progression, y'all. That's one, that's four. This is an interesting progression. I hope they keep doing it because I don't quite have it yet. It's a progression that I don't think is in any one key. I think it, it itself modulates and then modulates back to where it starts. but it's a dominant seven, and then it doesn't resolve right. That's where it switches. And they land on a major chord. And they, they go four, five, one, in a new key. And then it repeats. third relationship, another third relationship to a different G, back in E minor. I hope that's not the last time they do that. I need another shot at that one. <laughs> what an interesting progression that is. Sounds like they landed in E minor. First voices from the choir coming in, solo voice. Lovely. suspension they had with the voice there hanging out on the ninth of the chord before it resolved a 
this is the floor. dip in the choir with that. Just Oz, right? No words, just just an open vowel. It's in a really extended section over that E bass. They got back, that's where it started with that E bass. Four. Chord progressions between one and four tend to talk to me about life, about sus something sustaining, because the tonic note of the key is in both of those chords. It's like E minor at six, but a but a Dorian sixth. That would be C sharp. I've never heard a choir used like this in a um, mainstream rock band recording completely flabbergasted by this I mean we're truly on the yellow brick road I have no idea where we're going Gason, the guy that did the uh, the orchestral arrangements of this, uh, largely did his work after the band had already recorded all of these sort of backing tracks, and the band leaves and they go on tour to the United States, and Ron's back there writing the uh, orchestra parts and fitting everything together uh, to kind of create the final product. Chiffy, ch chiffy when it's, you know, ba -ba one of the things about church organs that you don't get is a sense of attack, right? Because it's powered by air, but with these electronic organs, you can get these chiffs that give it a nice percussive attack. Sounds like a bluesy guitar solo. Still one and four, but it's a different key than it, they were in. I think 
they're going back and forth between G minor and C. Neat little bass line. When we, when we do that sort of stuff, it tends to be orchestral or orchestrational glue. It's what can then tie everything together and, and pull together disparate parts. to play on harmonics, how they're making this sound so spacious and um, kind of ethereal, even though it's at its core it's kind of bluesy. Such a unique sound. to figure out if they're like singing something in Latin or some language. I don't think it's any language. I just think it's gibberish. skipping what I, think I should have brought out the herbal supplements for this one y'all but the scotch will do just fine like an avant-garde classical composition, like an avant-garde orchestral suite. Sounds more like that than a, than a piece by a mainstream, like, band. 
so fascinating, y'all. This could be the soundtrack to a horror film. Because that's like ghostly, eerie. said something, but it was so effective I couldn't tell what it was. Train going by? Okay, I think we're through the wormhole. Maybe not. It's like overlapping. At the same time, portions of what previously happened in the song, I think. It's just been being laid on top of of itself. Sounds like we're gonna move out of it. No. This is more odd than anything I have heard from Frank Zappa, for the record. Oh, there's that progression again. One, three, flat two, six, one, G, major four, major five, one, three chord, flat two. Nice. Back to one, E minor. Is that bass line again? Okay, and the cello coming back. Okay, one to four. There's a G7 chord, and it resolves to B. Okay, and there's that major chord. I think that's E flat. That would then be four, five, one in E minor. So, I, uh, hang on a second, y'all. So I know that we're getting close to the end of this, but this is an interesting bit of of a progression. I'm trying. This is the most interesting thing besides all of the the just the the uniqueness of an approach to a song like this from a band like this. I mean, that's really the main story here. But this progression is just um, challenging my ear because it's really fascinating. They're using traditional sounding chords in non-functional ways. And it starts in E minor and it ends in E minor, but in the middle they get to, I think, E flat major, which is not a normal thing <laughs> to do. It's taking a feat for them to, to get there. I want, I'm seeing if I can figure out how they're doing it. That's what's that's what's really piquing my interest right now. So I'm going to keep roll. Actually, I'm going to back up just a hair uh, and see if I can figure this out. There's the four, E to A, and then that G chord sounds like G7. Goes to B minor, stopping it. That should not happen. <laughs> that should. 
I shouldn't say that. That can happen and it's okay that it happens, but normally when we get a dominant seventh chord, it does not resolve up by a major third. <laughs> it, it's, it sets up as a dominant, as a five. It sets up to move by fifth and then they're doing a chromatic third resolu resolution to it to get to B. I'm gonna back, I need to, hang on a second, y'all. I need to back this up again and see what we can come up with this. Uh, let's try here. Then four, the A minor chord, G7, the three chord, goes to B minor, now that we're there, boom, G sharp minor, goes up, call it B flat, as dominant to E flat. Now, A minor, B, E, back to E minor. I think that's what they're doing. That's a four, the three. That G7 should go to C, but it goes to B instead. Completely weird. Down to G sharp, which is A flat minor, and harmonically is the four to five, two, one, and E flat. And then they do four, five, one, and E minor to get back to it. If that's not the weirdest progression that I've heard in one of these songs, I don't know what is. It's so interesting. The toggle from G to B to G sharp is where they do a lot of their magic in here. Because that's just one, and then four, five, one in, the, in a different key. Fascinating. Now it's the four, two, five, two, one, E flat, and then La Sol, and E. Oh, and then back to this kind of mother progression. The Adam Hart mother progression, shall we say. I love the brass. I love the orchestra in this. Oh! Everybody join in. Not resolving that, still on flat two. What are they doing? Major! It's on a major chord. What? Y'all. Of all the things I was expecting to hear today on a Friday episode, the music that we just heard was nowhere on my radar, and I don't know what to think about it. It's fascinating. How, 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 did, hmm. <laughs> I have to go back and listen to early Pink Floyd. If this is the type of stuff that they're doing, this is really interesting. Y'all, a 23 minute and 44 second track that's instrumental, that mainly features an orchestra. Here's the thing that, that is so uh, interesting to me about this, is that normally when we hear that a band, a mainstream band is going to be doing something with orchestra, it is the band primarily and the orchestra provides the backing support, right? This is flipped from that. The orchestra is like the lead instrument 
in this for a lot of the piece. And the band is almost like providing the backing support for the orchestration. And that is such a unique way to, to build a piece like this. I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted by this. Uh, I really, really enjoyed uh, that progression. I think that I got it right, but uh, I will double check it as I am editing to make sure that I did. Uh, I hope that y'all enjoyed that. If you have heard this piece before, and if you are well, uh, familiar with it, uh, I would love for you to tell me what you think it means or what it means to you. What uh, images are evoked in this? Uh, what do you think about when you hear this? I was really trying to figure out what makes it tick. I wasn't really going for esoteric meaning as I was listening to it. So I would be very interested to see what your take is on this. Uh, to uh, Nuno on Patreon, who was one of the folks that most recently has uh, requested this, and to all of you who have requested this piece, thank you for requesting it. I was really taken by this. I'm still kind of reeling from all that we just heard. But uh, wow, what a what a fascinating piece of music. Adam Hart Mother by Pink Floyd, the title track from their uh, 1970 album. Um, really, really fascinating. I can't get over that, y'all. So, uh, but but maybe by the end of the weekend, I will get over it in time to, to have new episodes next week. I'm not exactly sure what we're doing next week yet because it's Thanksgiving week here in America, and I'm not sure what our schedule is going to be. We'll try to get some episodes out, but it will probably be a shortened week. So uh, we'll see you uh, in the coming days on uh, Cheers, y'all, with, um, with some more... Uh, episodes. But until then, thank y'all for being with me and we will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.